What's going on guys? Uh, for those that celebrate Christmas, I would like to wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas. In this video, we're going to be discussing closures. So closure is a special type of function object that has access to the enclosing function's namespace outside of namespace. It's similar to a nested function, except that it can access uh, the outer function's namespace from outside of it. So essentially, the function and the enclosing environment are stored together, creating a closure. Now I'm going to explain this with a function. So this is an, a typical example of a closure, a typical, the typical layout or a typical structure of a, of a closure. So we have an outer function and we have an inner function. All right, so a closure is a special type of function, acts, uh, function object that has access to the enclosing function's namespace. So this is considered the enclosing function and this function is going to have access to the enclosing function's namespace, which is going to be this uh, exponent or uh, whatever we put in here. So we could put something like uh, x equals 3, and this is this exponent of is going to have access to this, this uh, outer function's namespace. If you guys don't know what namespaces are, uh, check out the video I made uh, earlier. I'm going to put a link in the uh, description. Uh, when I mean earlier, is earlier this year. So I'm going to put a link in the description, and you guys can check it out. So the cool thing about closures is that, um, here we go, it's, uh, it's similar to a nested function, except that it can access the outer function's namespace from outside of it. So I'm going to explain that what that means in a little bit, but let's just break down this uh, function. So there's an outer function and there's an inner function, which is exponent of, and basically we're using some of the arguments or some of the uh, variables from the outer function within the inner function. So the inner function is composed, uh, is asking for base, and it returns a base times exponent, and the outer function provides the uh, exponent. So we have the outer function providing uh, one argument, and the inner function takes that argument and does something with it. All right, and at the end, we're actually returning the inner function. So we are returning the inner function. So that's what the outer function does. It returns the inner function. One thing I want you guys to pay attention is that there's no open and close bracket. We're just returning the inner function without the sort of parameters or arguments. So we're just returning a plain inner function. So this is the typical structure of a closure. And let's see what we can do. So the first example of is square equals nth power equals two. So what happens here is we're calling nth power two, two is the argument or parameter we're feeding into the function, and we're getting back square. And now square is actually a new function because remember it returns a, a function. So let's just run this and see what happens. Okay, so we get back a square and it's a function nth power dot exponent of and what we really need to look at is the function is, I mean, a square is a function, so we, we could put any number in it. So if we put something like two, we're gonna get back a square. If we put something like uh, five, we'll get back the square of five, which is 25. So what's happening is we're calling nth power two, so this uh, nth power two is, this nth power two actually brings back a function with the two being sort of a static variable or a variable, that argument that we can't change. So our new function is going to be derived from this nth power with an argument of two. That two is sort of built in to this function and we derive another function from that. So just to make it a little clearer, what I can do is cube. If I, put, if I use something like nth power three, we're going to get a, back a function which has an exponent as a value of three. So this new function is going to essentially be a cube. Whatever number we put in it is going to be cubing that number because it's derived from nth power 3, and the 3 represents the exponent. So by using a closure, we can actually create sort of uh, multiple mini functions that just take in one argument, and uh, depending on which argument we originally used, so if we use 2, in this case, it's gonna, um, the new function is going to be a, a function that squares. If we put in 3, nth power 3, this new function is going to be a function that cubes. So essentially we're creating new functions derived from this main function. All right, so if we, let's just run cube now, just to show you guys. So cube, something like 3, so 3 times, that'll be 27. Uh, cube 4, um, 64. So once again, uh, we call the outer function and whatever value we put is going to be responsible for creating the new function. So in a sense, the new function is going to be derived from, from whatever value we put in the, the outer function. And this is a quick way to make different type of exponent functions. So we can easily 
replicate this, um, it's easy to replicate with a regular function, which is here. So we just cut this, paste. So we can actually replicate, uh, replicate, sorry, replicate the closure function, but it's it's not the same. We can do the same thing, but we can create sort of like cube. If we do something like um, power three, and then we put, we could put a different number, two. So this is gonna have an exponent of three and the value is going to be two. But there is a difference. In this case, you have to input the, the value as well as the exponent. And this might be a little more difficult to read, especially if you want to make uh, multiple cube functions. So say you want to have cube, maybe I guess four, something like power three, and then you would want the value to be four. So in this case, this might be a little easier to read. Um, so that's one benefit uh, of closures. You know, having a multiple arguments, you have to keep feeding in multiple arguments, might not be as, as readable as something like this, where I find it to be uh, a little easier to understand. So another benefit might be, say you have another function, something like this, func that takes in a function and it wants to calculate, say, the first 10 values of that function. So from range one to 10. Now, with uh, by creating a closure and by creating, say, a square and a cube, we could just easily fit all this. Uh, we could fit a square into here, which is also a function, and we get the t first 10 values of a square. We could get the first 10 values of a cube. Depending on uh, what type of functions you're using, depending on your code, um, sometimes using closure makes things a little simpler. So in this case, we can easily just throw in a function, a closure function, something like func square, right? And if we run this, we should get the first 10 values uh, of squaring something. So we get uh, 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. Um, and we could do the same now. We could just quickly just put in cube, the other closure function, and we'll get the first 10 values cubed from 0 to 9. So in this case, using closures might make things a little simpler or a little more readable. So that's one of the benefits uh, of using closures. Now, there's actually another benefit. Sometimes using closures can increase your code speed. So I've read this off of a blog that sometimes when you need to access values, say um, in this case, we want to access uh, dictionary values from our global namespace, it's quicker to use a closure because if you put the dictionary into the closure, accessing your dictionary values from uh, a local namespace as opposed to a global namespace can make your code run quicker. So. So we have a simple dictionary. So we have a dictionary and the dictionary has two keys, uh, X and a Y. And what we're going to do is we're going to be accessing the dictionary and then uh, adding all three values. We're, essentially, we're going to be accessing the X key and the Y key and um, we're going to assign those to the X and Y variables. And then we're going to uh, just assign Z, which we feed into Z and we're going to add all three, right? Let's just time this, okay? So I'm going to run this how many times? Uh, let me see, three, three, that's about one million times. So essentially I'm going to be running add three. So I'm going to be feeding in the value three to Z and we're going to be accessing X and Y from the dictionary and we're going to be returning X, Y, Z. So X equals add three. We're just going to be assigning to X and we're going to do this a million times and we're going to print out the time. So let me just run this. Okay, so it's about uh, 0.20 seconds. Uh, let me just get rid of the earlier code. Uh, where's the other earlier code? Okay, it's this one. Get rid of that. All right. In this case, we're uh, accessing the X from the dictionary that's in a global namespace, Y from the global namespace. Okay, so now I have another example with the closure. All right. So what we're going to do is the outer function is going to be uh, assigning X and Y. And now the inner function is going to be uh, returning X, Y plus Z. It's going to be using X, Y from the local uh, local namespace, which is here, and then we're going to be adding z, which is coming from uh, uh, the function itself. All right, I'm going to return add, and so what we're going to do is we're going to call the closure, c add, and now once we have the closure, we can add value. So in this case, we added the value three in the above example, so we're going to do the same. We're going to use c add, which is the closure add, and we're going to add the value three. And in this case, I'm just using this uh, underscore because we don't really care about the value. We could call it y or x or because we don't really care about this value itself. So if you ever see this underscore, this underscore being uh, representing an assignment, a variable, that means we don't really care what this variable is. We don't really care about the value. All right, so in this case, once again, closure add, and we're going to be 
feeding in the three, which is going to go inside uh, this add Z. Now, if I run this, so essentially I'm going to be running both. I'll run this and the above one. If I run this, and as you can see, the closure is a little quicker. Now this, if you're dealing with networks and uh, de dealing with uh, millions of requests, um, this uh, small incremental change, this small speed increase might be uh, very beneficial. So let's just run this again, uh, 0.6. So once again, 0 0.21, 0 0.16. And just in case, let me just run it like this. Um, okay, so if you run it without the above example, it's 0.15. So this could be another benefit of closures. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Leave your thoughts and comments. So once again, uh, Merry Christmas. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the holidays. And I will see you guys next time.